What's up Schwartz Force? Welcome back to the channel. Let's jump into this video. Today we're going over five reasons why this Ball Engineer Marvelite 3 is the best Rolex Datejust 41 alternative, specifically the reference 126300. Now, I got to say <laughs> this watch I absolutely love, but there were a few things that kind of had to grow on me. And so let's just start off with number one, the most obvious. This is pretty much an homage of the Rolex 126300 Datejust 41. And at this point, I mean, it's almost like a ringer. <laughs> it's slightly smaller at a 40 millimeter case diameter. Case thickness is actually 13 millimeters. This case has more of a Milgauss type of shape to it, which I really like instead of the kind of thinner Datejust. So it's not a direct homage of the Datejust, but I mean, it definitely is taking some design cues from Rolex with that Milgauss kind of shape that it has. Incredible finishing on this watch. We obviously have a Cyclops over the date at three o'clock. This watch is coming fully loaded, meaning sapphire crystal with AR coating. And obviously it's just a great looking watch. Even when we get up close, you'll see similar to Rolex along that chapter ring, we're gonna have those minute indices and five minute increments. And then of course the stick minute hour markers. One of the big differences is the handset. Now the specs are impressive and what you would kind of expect at this price point. So we have 100 meters of water resistance. One thing that is really unique about this piece compared to other watches in my collection is it has a 5,000 G shock resistance and some models of the Marvelite 3 do actually have a magnetic resistance up to 1000 Gauss. Now this watch is only resistant to 60 Gauss, which is still ISO 764 compliant. So for most to have that 1000 Gauss is gonna be overkill. But if that is a feature that you're looking for in this model, then you wanna make sure that you get the correct one and it'll actually say 1000 Gauss on it. And that is also the chronometer version of, of this watch. The only reason I didn't pick up one of those, which I would have loved to have, but they don't make it with a white dial. So that's why I went for this one, but it doesn't bother me that it doesn't have the thousand Gauss rating. That's completely fine with me. Now, number three, <laughs> the loom is phenomenal, which ball watch company is well known for, as you likely are aware of already if you're watching this video. We see tritium tubes all over this dial and on the hands itself. These tritium tubes give excellent legibility in any low light conditions without needing to charge the loom first. And I love this little, ooh, this little itty bitty baby tube on the second hand, I think is just too cool of a feature on this watch. There are some of the Marvelite, I believe it's the Marvelite 2 and some of the older versions of the Marvelite 3 that have just a plain second hand and it doesn't have that little cute little tritium tube on there. Now, reason number four, this is something I found really just surprising. And that is the fact that this watch is using 904L stainless steel. So same exact steel that is used in the Rolex models. And this is giving really, it gives an awesome look like the polishing all the high polish really stands out i mean this watch is definitely going to catch a lot of attention super shiny just reflects the light and of course it also downside to that 904l steel is it's a little softer so it does actually pick up scuffs and scratches a lot easier than your 316l stainless steel so that's just something to keep in mind now, reason number five is, of course, the price. <laughs> so unlike the Rolex reference 126300 or the 114300, if you want the OP39 without the date complication, these can be purchased for, let's say, between 1500 to 2000 depending on what discounts are available and if you can snag one pre-owned versus brand new. So for under 2K, you're getting a really amazing quality Swiss-made watch with some incredible history behind the brand. Now, this particular one is being powered by the Salida SW200, which again, is beating at four hertz, has hand winding, hacking, see the date complication there at three o'clock, and about 40 hours of power reserve on this watch as well. So you are not getting that in-house caliber like you would with the Rolex, but I have a lot of watches with Salida movements, never had any issues with them, knock on wood. So yes, great, great value. Now, some things that I don't like about the Ball Engineer Marvelite 3 or features that took some time to grow on me. <laughs> so the Dauphine style handset, it's just too dressy for my liking. And, you know, had Ball Watch used 
like baton or stick shaped hands it would have given that more of a sports watch look to it similar to the rolex models you know the intricate counterbalance on the seconds hand you know actually did grow on me at first i had kind of an issue with it the little railroad logo because i just thought that it was a bit too much going on um but i actually think it's really cool and and so that did grow on me now another thing that i wish was different is the bracelet has these raised center links you can see how they stick out quite a bit and these just become absolute magnets for scuffs and scratches i baby my watches you know i don't rub it across the the desk when i'm working or um, i really do try hard to not scratch up my watches same with the cases like on the side and the lugs that's just me but for most guys, I would have a feeling that, you know, this thing is just going to get all scuffed up pretty quickly after you get it. The other thing is the crown. Look how massive this crown is. It's just huge. And I just don't think it needs to be that big. I mean, it sticks out way too far. If it would have just been half the size of this, you know, it would have been just as functional, but looks so much better. So those are my nitpicks on this particular piece. But check this bad boy out double deployant butterfly clasp, super shiny, all that high polish and brushing going on. You can see some of that AR reflecting there. And then of course the loom, just simply amazing. You don't have to worry about charging it up. You just reach for it. It's, you can read the time no matter what you're doing. Um, but again, I wish it had more of that sporty feel with maybe a different handset. It's actually something I may consider doing is pulling the hands off and maybe putting some different hands on there. I don't know. That might be a mistake, but <laughs> maybe I'll get a watch modder to do that for me so I don't screw it up. Let me know what your thoughts are and, and I can't wait to do. I'll do a full review on this watch. I kind of went over a lot of it already, but this white dial version was the one that I couldn't find many videos on. And so I'm actually looking forward to doing like a really in-depth video with tons of B-roll for y'all to check out. But I just want to say thank you for checking out this video. Those are my five reasons. Let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, I can't wait to see you all at the next one. Till then, may the Schwartz be with you. Take care.